indeed contributed to um, what AKBF is doing and uh, what indeed intercessors has done. Someone in the group, in one of the groups that we are part of, said that this is one of the best things that he has had um, ever since he got to hear about teachings, about uh, business and about money. And I feel the same way. I hope you feel the same way as well. This has been one of the biggest eye openers for us uh, as a family and, and as business to uh, at some point we wished this would have been done earlier, maybe like in 2017. Some of us would be very far now. All right, I'm going to introduce Dr. Magara um, and then we'll talk about uh, what you can do for the intercessors for Uganda as we wait for him to join. Dr. Magar, for those of you who do not know, um, this Saturday he gave away his daughter and the celebrant said he's a household name in the aspects of intercession. Other than that, Dr. James Magara is also a futurist with a doctor in strategic leadership from Regent University, Virginia Beach, USA. He has a master of arts in organizational leadership and management from Uganda Christian University, Mukono. He has a Master of Science in Dental Prosthetics from the University of Bristol in UK and a Bachelor of Dental Surgery from Makere University in Kampala, Uganda. He holds an Advanced Leadership Certificate from Haggai Institute in Hawaii in the USA, Oxid uh, Executive Leadership Training Course Certificate offered by the Institute of National Transformation and Sondula's African Leadership Training Certificate in Servant Leadership. Um, Dr. Magara is a cherished voice on leadership in Uganda and beyond. He has spoken at leadership gatherings on three continents. His, his passion is to see Africa's immense human capital get put to use. And it's evident in his well-researched book, which I um, request and uh, advise that all of you get an opportunity to read it. It's called Positioning Africa in the 21st Century, The Pivotal Role, of leadership and think tanks. I'll put it in the chat so that you can look for it. It's on Amazon. It's also available in the local bookstops, uh, Restock, you can find it there as well. Dr. Magara has been actively involved in raising the standard of leadership and education in his, um, in this country of Uganda and across Africa by raising and developing and mentoring and equipping other leaders Besides just running a successful dental practice, he also serves as the International Deputy Director General of the Institute of National Transformation. He is part of the faculty that focuses on raising transformational leaders in the Africa and among African, Africans in the diaspora. He's also involved in training and mentoring of youth uh, in the Uganda Youth Forum. Um, he used to serve there as a board chairman for 12 years but he's currently the chairman, board of directors, Uganda and Heart Institute. He's the chairman uh, of the think tank, Center for Advanced Strategic Leadership, Castle. That is Dr. Magaro. Um, the intercessors for Uganda through AKBF um, is seeking your support in um, the ability to uh, continue these amazing programs and what we are looking or what the Intercessors for Uganda and through AKBF is looking at is by January, 2023, at least um, we should be, we should have raised uh, about 12.5 million in total. And this should take care of the, uh, the first uh, um, part of the year, that's January to April. And, they are, and by the 18th of December, um, 4.2 million has been uh, collected, and there remains a balance of about 8.2. And that's our appeal to you to give to the ministry. If you've been blessed, like I said at the beginning, this is an opportunity for you to give. But also, it, uh, we are placing a challenge that each of you as members, even if there were 150, could give 200,000. That is enough to cover uh, four people, so each person contributing 50,000. If you're to give forward to four people um, and support those four people, then we'll be able to cover what Intercessors for Uganda through AKBF needs to be able to run the, the ministry, be able to provide these very important um, uh, uh, trainings and, and teachings. 
uh, and be able to support as many people to receive this kind of knowledge. You can give through um, mobile money. Uh, the numbers are on the screen. You can take a screenshot um, uh, and be able to contribute to what um, Intercessors for Uganda through AKBF is doing. I'm not sure if Dr. Magara is in yet. Just confirm. Okay, he's not yet in. Okay. We'll just give him um, just another five minutes and then we'll get started. Hello, Isaac. I yes, hope everyone please. is hearing me. Uh, he's driving to his office, but uh, so he says he'll be a little late. Um, but we can continue with the discussion of Pastor Wabasa's uh, um, teaching. Uh, we can open the floor to everyone because we are blessed. We are there so that we give him time. And, uh, and 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 he gets ready. Um, maybe specials. I will alert us when when the time comes. I open with something. Then I'll let you, Isaac, teach us. I mean, lead us until he okay. comes. No. For me, what blessed, what blessed my heart was that story of the wedding at Kana when he said that in order to create wealth, you have to add value on a natural resource. I think that was a profound revelation uh, as we look for, as we look at how to create wealth, uh, looking at how we can add value to a natural resource. It was also a challenge in the sense that most of us have natural resources, but we, we have not been very serious. Let me put it to myself, not speak others. Let me not make a blanket, make a blanket statement. That I had not been so uh, looking in the area of adding value to a natural resource. So I started looking at the amount of land I have as a family, and uh, if I'm here complaining about money, it means I need to look at a natural resource. For the people who are not there, he said that Jesus, uh, first of all, he commended uh, the way people listen to Mary, that uh, Mary said, do what he tells you to do. That is hearing and following divine instructions. And then they, 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 they poured the water and then Jesus miraculously turned it into wine. The fact that the price of water increased to the price of wine, I found that very profound, very provoking in looking at how we can look at our natural resources around us, maybe mangoes, fruits which are in season, and then you add value to them, and then you get money. That was a, pro a profound revelation for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Phoebe. Um, is there anyone who'd like to share what was um, profound about the teaching that we had from Mr. Sam Wabasa? You can just unmute and, um, and speak and share. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> yes, I am Speciosa. Uh, there's uh, one uh, a, a, a portion that caught my attention. 
<clears throat> Pastor Sam said that every obedience comes with a package. When we obey his instructions, there's a package that follows that obedience. And he said that when we obey, one of some of the things that are in the package when you obey is favor, you find favor. When you obey the divine instructions from the Lord, the favor, favor is in that package. Protection is also there. And then you'll get divine helpers. In, 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 in that package, there's also divine helpers. If we obey those divine instructions, I believe even Peter, so when Peter was asked to launch deep, if he had to call for another boat to come and help up because the catch was big. And he, those help, I mean, those, that other boat that came in are some of the divine helpers that God gives when we obey the instructions that he gives us. Uh, I, I remember one of our facilitators talked about that we need to skill ourselves. And even him, he repeated it and said, one of the ways we add value is we can go skill ourselves, go for further trainings. <laughs> that, I think that was Julie Casita in the very first, uh, the very first presentation. And I took it and I said, I need to skill myself. Though I've been studying, I've been doing my other uh, studies for a bachelor, but I said, I can also skill myself. And I decided to do a, a, a skilling myself in tailoring. And I've seen after <laughs> like three months, I have made beautiful skirts. I have made dresses. So we can add value to ourselves also. Okay, here I am, Grace. Thank you, Grace. Uh, Thank you. Can I go ahead? Go ahead. Yes, um, I didn't attend the session, but I listened yesterday and it, it was so, so impactful. Um, another thing which- So those are some of the things that in this, in this, uh, in person, thank you. Oh, oh. sorry, I'm speaking. <laughs> no, go ahead. I think she had lost her network and came back and all of a sudden, just go ahead. Okay, so I was saying that um, I listened to, to, to the teaching yesterday and I was so amazed, it, it was so impactful. So one of the things that struck me was that if we don't see God's divine instruction and we do our own things, we, we do things our own way, we, we will be shocked uh, at the gates of heaven because we might do things and we succeed and we think it's all well, but we will be shocked because um, that's what Jesus said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, but those who do the will of the Father. So we might do things and we are succeeding and they are okay, but they are not in God's will. They're not following God's will. And so when we go, we'll be saying, didn't I do this? Because they were good things. Didn't I do this? I did this, I did this, because they were really good. We, they seemed to be successful. We seemed to be successful. They were good, but we are they in the will of God? So that one was very, very important. It struck me like, what? You may do something, you are succeeding, everything is good, but it's not God's will. So you're doing it, but at your own risk. So that was really, really key. Thank you. Thank you very much, Grace. The difference between God's perfect will and God's permissible will, the difference is obedience. Thank you very much, Grace, for that sharing. Angelina, go ahead, you can share. Thank you, Isaac. I also listened in yesterday to the recording. I'm thankful for AKBF for providing that recording. So what stood out for me was that divine instruction is available not only for business, but for every area of our lives. And I, I felt that uh, maybe I had ignored divine instruction for the things that I thought were small in my life and yet God is waiting and willing to direct. The second thing that I learned is that when you receive divine instruction the first time, you need to continue listening for the next step. 
for example, if God gives you the name of the business, that is not the end. He's willing to show you what you need to do after uh, registering the name. He's willing to show you where to be located, who to recruit, how best to uh, deploy your strategy. He's willing to show you, but you need to be faithful to the first dis um, divine instruction. He also shared an experience about missing out on God's will because he did not listen or he did not understand the instruction and how it took him so long to be able to come back to the place that God had wanted him to be because he had missed the turn. So it, it really challenged me, not only in, in uh, business, but in every area of life to begin to seek God more deliberately about what he wanted me to do and um, where he wanted me to go because he's willing and, and he is able. And if anyone has forgotten that God is concerned about everything, not only uh, business or not the things that we think are big, it was a good reminder that God is willing to, to show us. He also reminded us that all we needed was a word. Um, it's important for us to receive a word from the Lord so that we can run with that. So we also need to give time to listening in, to seeking him for we can recognize God's voice when we spend time in his presence, in prayer, in the study of the word and in fellowship so that we may be able to quickly discern what he's saying to us. Thank you. Very well said, uh, Angelina. Actually, my devotion this morning was from Proverbs 16, verse 33. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. And uh, Charles Spurgeon was saying that um, if this, the sparrows or the very hairs of our head are numbered, not a sparrow falls to the ground without the Father, how much more the ev events of our lives? And he was encouraging that uh, we need to understand that anxiety and worry and uh, you know not consulting of God cannot enable us to do what God desires of us to do. And we are meddling with his business if um, we neglect the fact that he's the one who guides our steps. Dr. Magara is in the room. Um, I'm going to um, allow him to get ready to get in. Um, Dr. Magara, are you Isaac? ready? Yes. Isaac? I request our participants to allow us to give him his 45 minutes from quarter right now up to 7.30 so that yes. he may complete his sharing. Yeah, Thank it's you. what I was going to ask as well. Thank you. I think that's okay with all of us. Um, we will allow doctor to share up to 7.30. Doctor, you're most welcome. Um, good morning, everyone, and um, apologies for coming in late. There was a bit of miscommunication, but um, I think we are over that. So um, I will get straight into my sharing, and uh, thank you, um, Ekebia, for raising this platform, um, and um, for the ministry that is going on to... Um, <coughs> To help in the area of business, which I believe is something that God is putting his finger strongly on in the season that we're in. Um, the message I've been asked to talk about is on raising capital and finances. And I will speak from personal experience, uh, but also anchor it in the word of God. Um, I may have, you may have had my testimony before, I'll just go over it. I was never I was not raised in a business family. So uh, my parents were pretty much civil servants. Um, so the aim that uh, the target I was given was to really work hard, get a university degree, get a job. And uh, in those days, that was really what was the key thing we looked up to. I faltered, more or less faltered. Uh, and then in, in the year 1992, I, was, uh, I spent a lot of time praying and seeking God about my future. And um, 1993, an opportunity opened to go into private practice. At that time, I was already lecturing at the university. And I did not think much about, and I was really looking at building a career in the academia. So God opens the door. 
for me to start a business. And uh, it was a very scary thing. You know, if you've never been in business before, the, the whole area of risk was just something very foreign to me. Um, so an opportunity comes up, and in this case was uh, starting up a dental practice. I had no resources at all. Um, so I remember walking to banks. I don't know how many banks I walked to. Um, and they were very courteous. I uh, ask you questions. You have a card. You have an untitled. You have this. So we'll get back to you. And they never did. Um, eventually, just cutting the story short, um, I was able to connect with uh, a, a friend of a, a friend of a friend. Let me put it that way. And some people that I knew. I knew them, but I knew them more strongly to other people. And uh, so when the vision was shared, uh, the believers, they went and prayed and the Lord um, spoke to them. And so they were able to release money for me to start to buy the initial equipment, and, um, um, the materials that I needed to start the practice. Um, as I said, it was a very scary venture because um, I never, or I had been in that amount of debt before in terms of borrowing. Fortunately, there were people that I knew and who, 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 who risked trusting me because never had the experience of dealing. Um, so, so I really worked hard to pay, work on paying that loan. And a short while, about two years later, um, I was paying off the loan and uh, I just told myself, this is it, I'm not borrowing again. And then an opportunity came to expand the practice, which was really needed at the time. Um, I, would, I just didn't want to think about getting any more funding. Now, fortunately, because of the relationship and because I've been faithful in paying monthly, there were some of two, a few months where I was not able to make a payment. Um, when I realized, you know, was, again, it's a very long story, but when I realized that I had to <clears throat> expand, I couldn't stay where I was because uh, it was getting a bit untidy now because, you know, this was small, clientele had increased. I remember one time a major clientele came and found the receptions full and said, I'll just wait in my car. Um, so it became clear to me, a lot kind of nudged me on. I spoke the same people who had helped me earlier and they were able to extend another loan. I just want to emphasize that they could only do this because I've built a track record. Um, again, it was a, it's a much bigger loan. Um, and uh, again, in some agreements, time to agree on. Um, I paid off that loan. Now, I thought I'd pretty much settled, uh, just telling myself, no moving again. But no, God has a way of putting you in uncomfortable situations. I was in a situation of rent, and uh, it didn't take me very long to find out that I was paying the landlord's mortgage. Uh, and uh, if I stayed there <clears throat> just seven years, if I worked for seven years at the time, this was the year 2000, I did my calculations and realized that I would have already or that probably bought a house. So the idea of saying, why don't you get your own property? And instead of paying someone else the mortgage, you pay mortgage on your property. Well, again, um, uh, long story, um, they identified a place. I'll skip all the details of what happened. One key thing at the, the same time, we we're seeking to build our own house. Um, and the Lord spoke to me one morning and said, forget about your house. You know, first, first build a business. Actually, from a, from a scripture and for us, first build your business then build your house. There's a very clear scripture and that spoke to me very powerfully on money. So we focused on now um, on building. Um, okay. Can you hear me? In case you can't hear me, let me Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. <clears throat> so God, now what happened? Now, there's not enough time to tell the whole story here, but um, the property we're in now was up for sale and through a series of circumstances we got the property um again i needed financing and uh, this was emergency financing because it came to a point when i was going to lose the place um and i remember taking off time to pray one uh, um I, I defaulted on payments a uh, certain set of payments which had been made with the vendor development corporation at the time and i didn't realize many people wanted the property but the landlord had favored me because of the relationship and she had been my patient for a long time. And when she had, I was interested, she blocked everyone else. So um, again, I had to get funding 
But uh, this time it was fairly dramatic because the amount of money was so much more. Um, and um, I remember when the crisis came, I, I spent one week, I took off one week in fasting and prayer. Now, all, the, the, all these things are relevant to raising, <clears throat> raising capital and finances. And um, I, that's, uh, the last day of the fast, the seven-day fast, I, I, I did have an answer. So it was a Sunday. I told my wife and to go with the children to church. I said, I, need, I just need to be in God's presence to hear. Now, in that time I stayed home, I began to get ideas. Now, I'd like to remind us of Deuteronomy chapter 8, um, I think it's verse 18, that uh, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it's he who gives you power to make wealth. And that word power uh, from the Hebrew, original Hebrew, is related to ideas that God will give you ideas. You know what? I, I, I don't know that I've heard the testament of someone waking up and just finding resources of money beside their bed. God can do that, but he doesn't do that. If he does that, he'll be very, very, he'll, be, he'll probably be contributing to inflation in the country. <laughs> but uh, he, <clears throat> God gives you ideas. And that morning I sat down. By the time my wife came back from church, I had a business plan. I didn't know it was a business plan at the time. It was just a plan on, if I got this kind of money, I'll talk to an idea of someone to talk to came to talk to them. We're not in the country, they are abroad. Uh, if I got this kind of money, uh, talk to the person, uh, I can convince them saying, uh, this is uh, how I pay. This is, I realized that the property itself would be very good security and so on. So I presented the plan. I had just two weeks, about two weeks to the deadline I'd been given. If I didn't pay the default by that time, we were taking over the building. I'd have lost everything. I began renovating the place and all that. So I presented the plan and they said, look, we don't have any money. It does now have cash. All we have are, are bonds. But let's hear what the Lord says. So one week later, they said, well, God has spoken to us to support you. Um, I'd offered them an interest payment to hire them. The interest payment they'll be getting from their bank abroad. <clears throat> also borrowing foreign currency. So, um, so the one a week later, or within the following week, money was in. I, I will never forget the look on the on the of, official receiver. Um, on uh, I think it was in Uganda House when I walked in and presented the bank draft for the full payment of the building. The man was in shock. He said, "No, the file. No, you shouldn't have. You should have renegotiated. What you know?" Um, I, and I found out later that people were interested. Who, if I defaulted, or this wouldn't take the place. So um, I, uh, that, within two weeks or so of that time of prayer, two, three weeks, I can't remember the exact dates very well. Basically, the, I had the thing in my names. Now I'd had a private arrangement with the other the, the people that I talked to and we worked on payments. And uh, it was just amazing. It was what, the best loan I ever took was, uh, I've taken one other loan later, which I realized was, very, was, uh, was probably uh, not the right thing to have done. Now, I've had another experience. I just want to begin these experiences, but uh, then I'll come to principles. <clears throat> uh, about four years ago, I wanted to expand, my, uh, to bring in a new aspect to my business. And uh, by the way, initially, banks had no interest in us at all. Uh, but now, after some time, the business has grown, the banks were walking in, if you want to borrow money, and so on and so on. So I... Um, that time we were into my bankers, they had began asking so many questions. By the way, if you get a bank loan, just know they will ask a thousand questions, uh, short of asking what you ate for breakfast. But um, <clears throat> so I went through all that, and uh, I was trying to get this done by the 20th anniversary of the clinic. But there were questions after questions after questions until I just got frustrated and I just said, I'm not taking a loan anymore. They had all my accounts, they know the day I was banking regularly and all that. I just said, I'm not taking a loan anymore. I realized God was protecting us at the time. That was 2018. Uh, 2019, actually. Um, a few months after we turned that thing down, COVID hit. And you know what COVID, what kind of problems it caused for businesses. I was just so glad that we didn't take a loan. And after that, God helped us to see a way we could actually use another business, uh, which had resources redundant now because of COVID, to finance what we wanted. And so I was able to put up what I wanted without any loan. Um, so I've been able to, with God's help, to build um, the Jubilee business without, uh, okay, talk about loans. I've been loans from individuals, not from friends. Um, 
friends really. And uh, but more, but then um, during that time, there were a few years before that, I had an experience where we we're trying to get money to expand the school again. Went through the loan process, um, and uh, I tell you, I I know there may be bankers here, but the experience has not been good. They got everything they wanted, the collaterals, and that. after all, they say, no, want another property. So at that point, I walked away. I walked away, and uh, everyone around me was saying, but why we need? That? I said, no. My spirit is not peaceful with this. Again, I'm glad I walked away. I'm not saying walk away. You need to hear God. Because some things happened after that which made, made everyone realize. Recently, one of the people involved came back and said, thank you for hearing the Lord. Thank you. Um, if we had gone that way, uh, even during this COVID time, a lot of schools lost properties. Um, we were able to sail through. We could have just close the school and walk away for two years. Um, nothing because the property was fully owned. So uh, these are my experiences. Um, I got into a mortgage, uh, or eventually I got one mortgage and I realized that the, the, the system really sucks money out of you. And uh, so I made a commitment to get that sorted as soon as possible. So having said all that, uh, again, I'm drawing from my personal experience. I want us to draw principles in the remaining uh, 30 minutes or so. And I'll take us to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, verse, um, verse 1 to 7. And I'm just going to read it out to my uh, <clears throat> electronic Bible here. It's about Elisha and the widow's oil. So it says, uh, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elisha, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. I did know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. Uh, and when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you. And your sons, you bind you and your sons, then pour it into all the vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her. The sons, who brought the vessels to her? She poured it out. When it came, then it, now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And they said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. She then came and told the man of God, um, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Now, I just want to draw some principles from here and also make some comments. Um, and the first thing I'd want to say uh, from verse one is that he was a man of God, one of the prophets. We don't know very much from him, about him apart from the fact that he was a servant of Elisha. We also know he feared the Lord and he was in debt. So as we look about raising finances, uh, we have to address the question of debt as well. And I'll give you some of my own experiences. Some people have speculated that this man was Obadiah, but it's not really expressly stated. Um, some have been said, um, I think from some of the Hebrew writings, that he had borrowed money to feed the 100 prophets of God. Maybe, we don't really know. But whatever the case, the man died without meeting the final financial obligation. So his creditor did not die, unfortunately. And uh, uh, so the creditor comes after, after him, after his family. He's been left behind. Now, of course, since he feared the Lord, uh, I don't believe that uh, he, 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 he did not have an intention to pay back the loan. I believe he did. But for some reason, he didn't do it. You know? So later, the widow says she has nothing left. You know? um, of course, the loan, whatever loan he had taken, had been bantam. That's one danger, by the way. We don't know it. We cannot say he had misused it. If he had used it to solve the profit, the profit, maybe that to be used. But if he had used it and misused it, which is a very big problem in our country, that people borrow loans, uh, get money, and then instead of using the money for the purpose for which it was borrowed, instead of them buying a new car, instead of them marrying a new wife, and all kind of thing, uh, getting a thank you by the middle. Now, the problem is a crisis. So uh, to solve the problem, the, the, the widow is in distress. She comes to Elijah, and Elijah didn't ignore her. But Elijah helped her to want to renew her perspective. 
But also we see here that you have to establish partnerships. Uh, perspective is very important. Partnerships uh, uh, are needed in uh, business, but I'll talk about that. What kind of partnerships? And then encourage productivity. So a very simple question that he asked in verse two, what do you have at home? Um, and uh, that is a focus that we need. Uh, when you want to raise money, start with what you have. What do you have? What do you have? Um, sit down and ask the Lord to speak to you. What do you have to start with? Uh, she had to get a new focus. Um, sometimes it's not shortage, but uh, lack of perspective. Uh, we may be looking in the wrong direction or thinking we don't have anything. Maybe it's land you have. Maybe it is a skill you have. What do you have? What do you have? Um, and that uh, what we say also comes on. Maybe there are savings you have that you're not aware about. Just sit down and ask the Lord to open your eyes. Because this lady did not realize she had something that God could use. Uh, it was like it's nothing. Back to our first, first answer was it's nothing. Okay. So the answer is quite revealing. She says nothing. But then she remembered except. So let me ask again, what are those accepts that are there that you're not aware about you know, when you think about raising finances? And uh, I would expect that maybe it came after some prodding. Here, the Bible summarizes a lot of things. I believe there was some kind of conversation. It says nothing. So, I mean, you tell them nothing. It says, nothing. nothing. What do you have? Tell me what's in your house. Tell me what's in your house. Eventually, she says, well, I have just a little jar of oil. You know? She says, okay, we're going to work with that. And this is very typical of God wanting to start with what you have. Maybe it's a skill, maybe it's uh, some property, maybe it's some asset, uh, but something that you have. The fish, the five fish, um, uh, five loaves rather than two fish. You know? um, what is it that you have? You know? She may even fear that the little oil will be taken away. You know, there was uh, Elijah, Elijah had an experience, uh, the father of, <laughs> future father of Elisha, whereby, um, 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 the widow had a little bread and said, give it to me. Maybe she had had that story. We don't know. She would have been afraid that if I tell this man of God, I have oil, he might even say, give it to me. But anyhow, we see here that um, she started off with something small, presented it to God, and God was able to multiply. This is a powerful scriptural principle. The principle of Moses' rod, what do you have in your hand? The principle of David and the sling stones. David went with Goliath with stones. Yes, he didn't go empty-handed. He went with something. I talk about the uh, little loaves and five fish, the mustard seed. This is a kingdom principle. So when you talk about raising finances, that's the starting point too. But then you can go beyond that. Uh, verse 3 talks about um, establishing partnerships. Go and borrow. <clears throat> if we have time, we may talk a bit about borrowing. Borrowing is not necessarily wrong. Uh, in this case, she was in debt, but God tells her to go and borrow. But there are principles that govern borrowing, because if you don't follow them right, they can become a disaster. And not only that, get your sons involved. So all the people who were in trouble got involved. Get your family involved. How much is the family involved in what you do? Um, how much is the family involved? Um, get the family involved. Get your sons involved. So the problem here is not the borrowing. The problem is when we become a chronic borrower um, and then we fail to pay our debts. That's called wickedness. The Bible called, says a wicked man borrows Psalm 37 and does not pay back. And let me just say this. If any of you are listening to, to me today and you have debts you're not paying back, the Bible calls that wickedness. Go and pay your debts. You know, you cannot ask God to provide anything more when you have not paid somebody you owe. You went to a brother or sister, you borrowed money and you've not paid. Uh, this is the word of the Lord to you this morning. Go and pay. The Bible calls that wickedness when you don't do it. Now, seek God for the right partners. Uh, in this case, the, go to your neighbors. Go to your sons. The woman went alone and says, hey, whatever God is going to do, involve your sons, involve your neighbors. But what levels of involvement? The sons had a certain level of involvement. Uh, the neighbors had a certain level of involvement. They were just, they provided something that they, they, she was going to give back. We're going to pay back, bring back. Can you imagine this woman taking the neighbor's jazz and saying, refusing to give them back? That would have been wickedness. And then there was faith involved. And I remember when I started, I just wanted enough money to buy the minimum. 
And uh, God encouraged me to the people that helped me the first time saying, is there anything more that you need? Then, and I said, okay, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. You know, faith says, don't just get a few. Now, if your problem is just solving a debt problem, uh, faith is, is too small. And I have news for you. God has bigger plans. I had no idea in 1992 when I started out. And in, 19, in 2002, that is 10 years later, when we started the school, we just wanted to solve our own problem. And uh, God had much bigger ideas. He wanted to touch many more families uh, through the school that we run. We wanted to touch you know, thousands of people, tens of thousands of people that we've treated in the last, um, um, you know, since 1994. We are coming to 30 years, in about two years, we're marking 30 years. But at that time, I was just solving a personal problem. So may God give you faith um, to stretch your thinking to, to bigger than God, what God wants to what to match what God wants to do. Now we also see that in raising resources, work was involved. Can you imagine? God, they are raising resources, but they had to work. They had to work. Uh, we must work. Go around, talk to your neighbors, gather the jars, shut the door, pour the oil, put it aside, work, 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 work. We need a new work ethic. Okay. It's been said the only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. S comes before W. That is the only place. Uh, of course, the other people who, if you call it success, good success, it's bad success where you just cheat and steal and you look successful, but you're actually a thief. Um, that's a different sort of success. But uh, in the Bible, in God's scheme of things, um, success, uh, success always follows work. And uh, so we see here, uh, making contacts uh, very, very key here, productivity. They're raising resources, remember, but work is involved. Get out of your home, contact people, uh, let go of your pride, you know, get some boldness. Uh, find people you can talk to. So the first step is establishing contact. Here we see going out, establishing contact partners, <clears throat> strategic contacts. And remember, uh, God is our first contact. It's always our first contact. We go to him. And uh, so I'm not giving you a message just based on principles of business. Well, here they are kingdom principles of business. God's our first contact. But he, gets a, he calls us to get into deeper water. Um, the next contact was Elisha, who was a man of God. And I remember even both ventures that we did, uh, talking to my spiritual father, sharing about Uncle Leban Jumba, who's my spiritual father, saying, this is what I'm planning to do. He came, he got involved with us, he prayed with us. Um, people, who has God put in authority over your lives? Don't ignore them because they are pastors and so on. They don't know business. No, bring them in. If there are people that God has put as spiritual oversight, or that God has led you, get them involved for counsel, for guidance. Um, so contacts, contacts, contacts. Uh, resourceful people those who stir you up. And in both cases, uh, to his credit, Uncle Leban encouraged me to move uh, and to have faith. And then in communicating the vision, look at it, ask all your neighbors. So you have a vision, you have something that you want to do, write it down, make it plain, communicate what is in your heart. Let God show you who. In this case was the neighbors, okay? You can imagine the boys running around, running around the village, calling, calling for empties, empties, you know, empty, empty jars. You have any empty jars? You have any empty jars? The neighbors' questions, you know, well, the boys were able to ask the questions. They know that's the woman in debt. That's the woman who's about to have all her property taken. Her boys, are, she has no property actually. Her boys are being taken now. They're asking for empties. What if they don't return them? So they had to answer questions. What is it for? What is it for? You know, uh, they had to communicate. You know, they released. And as a result, they were able to actually get jazz to fill up the house with jazz. And uh, we see here they established a center. Go inside and shut the door behind you. Um, she has, actually, this should call that her business premises. Now, I don't know at what point you are raising funds. But, uh, when I started, I didn't have any, I didn't even have, okay, I had some premises in a sense. <laughs> when we started the school, our premises was our home. What is your center? Uh, sometimes you're raising funds, uh, but you just have a briefcase. Uh, these days, for registration, they want an address. <clears throat> what is that address? In, in this case, it was her home. You know, uh, she needed a place where she could operate quietly and undisturbed. Okay, 
It was not the veranda, it was not under the tree. Uh, it was not a briefcase uh, moving from place to place. And I do appreciate that some businesses work like that, but you still need to have some point of contact, point of sense. Uh, anyone funding you would like to know about that. And you don't have to always make a public announcement of what you know God is doing. Um, here, here they ask for the jars and they close the door. So that's another, it's maybe a side point, but very, very uh, key principle. Quiet place where you can keep your records, you know. Um, but I begin small. Um, in my experience, in all the things we've done, we began very small. When we started the school, it was in our initially our garage and into one of the rooms. Um, today it has uh, its own premises. When I started the clinic, it was one little room on the KPC building, which God kept growing. Uh, today it's grown beyond one center. We have four centers now, and we're going to get more centers. Um, so uh, then conservation, shut the door behind you, keep intruders out. Um, uh, a key thing, I won't talk too much about that, uh, but it says pour oil into all the jars. This is now the place of hard work, critical stage effort as they began to pour the oil to their amazement, the oil just kept flowing and flowing the jar. I mean, I'm sure this woman's hands were trembling as she poured and put the jar down and that one is full, bring another one. And uh, she begins pouring and the oil just keeps going. I can just imagine what's going on in that house. Mom, mom, we, we, are, we are feeling these things. And we are feeling the boys are seeing their captivity going away. The woman is in tears as she sees God as her friend. Hard work, hard work, um, hard work. Thank God she obeyed and uh, we talked about casting your bread upon the waters and then making savings. And as they poured each, it was put aside. This is a concept of saving as well, which is a very big problem in our day. Usually when, when it comes to starting businesses in many places, the starting point is savings. What have you saved? What have you built that you can now use to, that's a, that is the cheapest money. It's the cheapest money you can, you can have, you know. Uh, when you've grown for yourself, you're not charging yourself interest. The moment you begin going outside, there's some element of interest. But the further you go, the more expensive the money has. Well, the money has a cost. Money has a cost. So saving, saving, saving. So you can imagine, you know, uh, this lady um, in that room, as I said, excitement, the jazz are feeling. The boys are realizing that their nightmare of being slaves was being pushed away. The hand, lady's hand is trembling. She's probably in tears. The boys are smiling. They are jumping up and down, but they keep working. Each jar was bringing them closer to freedom. Then they realize at some point that they have enough money to, to slowly pay off the debt, but they don't stop. They don't stop. They keep pouring, keep pouring, until at last the mother says, now bring the next jar. And they say, there's no more. Is normal. So they didn't get tired. There was not one jar left. And that's another problem that we have. We get satisfied very quickly. You wanted to solve a problem, the problem was solved, and then you say, oh, thank the Lord, the problem was solved. Uh, looking back on myself, I could have been very satisfied with just one room, uh, which I started off with, because at that time, when I came to a point where it was comfortable, I could solve, I could meet my, meet my needs. I didn't realize God had other plans. And because we kept growing as God allowed us to grow, I came to a point where I would have the resources to help start the school. It had been very difficult. If we didn't have, we're not, we're not built up the fast business as it were. Okay, so the jazz uh, set the limits. Um, yeah, the limits of your ability um, really are well, how, much, how much can you believe God for? Once the last year was over, the stop oil stopped. So um, I'm combining this with issues of faith, you know, being having faith, uh, marketing the goods um, was the next step. They cleared the debts. Um, yeah, so I think I brought out enough principle, enough principles there. I just want to talk a bit about um, now overview now as I begin to wrap. Because uh, <clears throat> we'll talk about personal investment. What do you have? Number two. Another source of raising capital is friends and family. I've given you examples of that. Uh, you may have a rich uncle, you know, what testimonies of a rich uncle, or a rich auntie, or whatever, some relative, uh, or friends. Now, again, 
when you, it's very, when you deal with friends, make sure you know money can ruin friendships. You know, so you when you begin relating with friends, make sure you're faithful. If there are difficulties, communicate. I've seen many <clears throat> many friendships go uh, because people who borrowed money were not faithful. You know. Um, and I've known the times will just say, I'll just give you the money. I just don't expect it back. That's it. But you know, they'll not give you everything they could give you. When you build credibility, and I can't tell you over these years, there are a number of friends who stood with us who have helped us at critical times, especially in the early days. But these people are still friends today because we paid back everything we got from them. Now, uh, if you take it up uh, further, there are other ways, depending on the size of your business, you can get venture capitalists. These are people who believe in what you're doing. They come in, they put in money, they take a bit of ownership of your company. Uh, they usually have some skills they can bring on board. Uh, their interest is to see your business grow and get some equity. <coughs> um, then there, there, there's what they call angel funding, where you get someone else who, some, some rich net worth individual who, who comes in as well uh, to put in money. They'll have that interest. Usually their interest is to make money. Um, very common is to make money. Um, and so they, they have the money, but they save good business idea. They put it in. I don't know how much of that is in Uganda yet, uh, but as we become more globally connected, uh, you can source funds from abroad as well. <clears throat> I'm just interested in crowdfunding, uh, which can happen online, where you share an idea online to whosoever, and people who people can contribute. Excuse me. <clears throat> Various people can contribute. Then uh, the, uh, there are more and more business incubators coming up, where you go into a place where, then, again, I'm not going into details on this, but just note them down as possible areas. Can research on, or maybe AKBF can bring bring on board people who 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 do this kind of things to give you an idea. You have an idea, you go to this first place, a business incubator where you have all the support. They help you build up, you know, business plan and marketing plan, maybe the product. Maybe two years or so, then you can launch the business. Those are now increasingly available. You could get a grant. Uh, those are more difficult to get, but it's possible. You can get a grant or subsidy depending on the line of business you're involved in. Do a search. Do a search. Part of your due diligence is search on the net. Are there any people interested in this area of business? Where could I get funding or grants? Now, I've talked about loans <coughs> extensively. And uh, I've talked about the, the different things loans can do. Let me conclude by just making some more comments about loans. And I know this, this may be a question many people have. <clears throat> the, the Bible doesn't say, actually, God's blessing, God promises us that uh, if we'll diligently follow him, according to John 23, when we walk in him and we walk in the blessings of his covenant, uh, we will be lenders and not borrowers. We shall lend. That is in Deuteronomy 23, you know, uh, 28, actually. 28. It's about being lenders and not borrowers. However, the Bible does not say we should not borrow. Uh, but it shows us we should be as free as possible from things. Now, if you look at uh, Exodus 22, uh, verse 25, and just note it down, I'm not going to read it, 22, 25. The Lord uh, commanded the Israelites that when they lend to their fellow Israelites, they do not charge interest. Uh, so basically, God was God was saying you can lend, but these are the conditions for lending. And there was... Uh, uh, saying, and basically lending to believers, uh, lending to, to, to a fellow believer, a fellow Israelites at that time was like lending to the Lord, as it were. And uh, God promised a blessing to those who lend um, interest free. So you can go and decipher that. I'm not putting any laws out there, but uh, you go and walk through that. Um, Psalms 15, verse 5 takes who might who, who may ascend the hill of the Lord, he who, who loans, who lends money without usury, without interest, as it were. So that's that is one one thing. So basically, you're saying that it is it is uh, it is um, it is it is not illegal to borrow. Uh, God actually said you can when you, you can lend to follow Israel. Then in Deuteronomy 15, <coughs> God takes. Uh, God gives provision for those who are able to not only give outright, but also to grant personal loans up to six years. 
2015 um, talked about when you learned after seven, the seventh year of the year of Jubilee. Then let me give you a more direct scripture on this, Matthew chapter 5, verse 42. Actually, this is a scripture the Lord spoke to the first people who helped us when they were seeking the Lord about what to do. The Lord used the scripture. It says, Matthew 5, 42, give to him who has so and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow. <clears throat> of course, it means that you must be in a position to do it. It doesn't mean that you know, anyone wants to borrow, give it to them. Also, as I've said, there has to be a track record. If the person who has borrowed has been a poor steward, then, um, you know, uh, I, I, I wouldn't be an obligation to lend to them if they have failed to meet an obligation. <clears throat> there's, a, there's, a, there's a saying, <laughs> uh, the definition of a distant relative is a close relative who, who you lent money. That's what, that's what the, how the saying goes. Uh, and then you can also read Deuteronomy 25. Uh, verse 35 37, which talks about loaning to a brother who is in difficulty. So I think I'm going to leave it here. Um, I've said enough for you to chew on. I'm leaving just a few minutes to for any possible one or two questions. Um, I do hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, back to Eza. Thank you very much, Dr. Magara. Um, yeah, it's the second time I'm listening to this story and I'm always um, encouraged and challenged. The first time I listened to it, I had to change my view of partnerships and I'm in a process of regaining back uh, my company. Uh, the floor is open. Please ask questions if you have questions. I have a question here from Apophia. Does that mean that as a Christian, uh, I should not take on money lending as a business. That's a question from Apophia. Is there anyone who has a question? One more question so that uh, we can allow doctor to respond or two more questions. Any... I could talk about that as a question is coming. <clears throat> Again, there are principles. There are principles. I, uh, we've seen do not do not refuse to, to lend. I think it's it's clear God does not stop it. Because, uh, however, uh, there are shark money lenders. We know them in this city, both small and big. People who lend money to them trap others. That is, that is from the kingdom of darkness. Uh, I believe uh, more and more, the more I understand the financial system of the world, it's a system that is designed to take. It is designed to, to suck. Um, and it's a system that uh, I believe God, God, God I, I, well, and I, let me leave it at that. So, um, if you're a money lender, let your principles be very clear. The terms are clear. You set up the conditions clearly. Um, people are supposed to pay back. That is that is biblical, you know. So it's just that that can be a very valid business. There are principles to guide it, setting up in the scriptures. Isaac, is there another question? Yeah, there was somebody who raised their hand and took it down. Um, Someone is saying <laughs> they missed the, the definition of distant relative. Okay, if you can... A distant relative is a, is a close relative you lent money. <laughs> that can happen to a brother as well. A distant <laughs> brother is a close brother you lent money. That is if they didn't. They begin to dodge you, they begin to do what kind of stuff. If, if go ahead and ask your question. Eve, please unmute and ask your question. Okay, thank you. Um, James, I just wanted to know, at one point in time, if you are a person who's lending, um, when you begin to get debts, and uh, the people are not, they could be Christian, well, anything. They're not bringing it back. At what point in time do you just uh, decide this one is not coming back and um, let me let it, you let it go and it goes and it's not done bother you going forward? Well, I mean, there are different approaches to it. Um, in business, you look at dates, maybe 30 days, 60 days, 180 days. Uh, at some point in business, you, you, you decide it's a bad date. Uh, you write it off. There's a procedure for doing that. Just know this money is not going to come back here. 
if you're dealing with URA, you've got to show that you've done everything to do to claim that date. Because remember, once it's registered in your books, and this is what people don't realize. Uh, if you go to a place, you get a service, if it's by accrual, which it is, you know, like in my business, if I bill you, and I, I, I pay taxes on that because they count that that's money that is coming in. So that financial year, I pay taxes. So apart from, apart from the money that wasn't paid, I pay an extra amount of money. That's why it's so wicked. <laughs> Uh, to do that because you think you haven't paid that but you've actually got the person in bigger trouble but the time comes when you you know reason not bad debts just say well now it depends sometimes you write off leave it in the book um, when the person comes back sometimes when 10 years later you remind them um, but uh, back to your question I think you're talking about the personal loan uh, the bible also asks us forgive us our debts as we forgive others so a time comes when you can forgive goods when you decide to forgive debts. And uh, I think that's a matter that you need to work out with the Lord. In the old covenant, there were seven years given. The seventh year was the day that you cancel debts. Just let it go. And it was a way of trusting God also that you know God would take care of our uh, uh, so it's a it's it's uh there's a there's a, a, a biblical um pathetic side to it. Sometimes you just see someone is really having problems, and I've done that as well. And just got them and said, "That money, you owe me, forget it." Um, our relationship will continue, but I do realize you're going through this kind of situation. I hope that helps you. Isaac. Yes, uh, is there anyone else who has a question? Thank you so much, doctor, for that. Um, knowing when to you know, close off a debt, but also the importance of understanding uh, the consequences of debt to you as a business uh, uh, by way of taxes. Is there anyone else who has a question? Uh, Robbie's not a question, it's actually a statement. He says there's a difference between interest and ushery. Ushery is access, excessive interest. He was just adding a comment to that. Thank you so much, Robbie. Is there anyone else who has a question? We are coming to the end. Okay, since there's no question, um, I want to thank all of you for being here. And thank you so much, Dr. Magara, for being in on such short notice. I uh, just have one an announcement, uh, actually two announcements. The first announcement is that um, our last session will be on the 23rd this, uh, of this Friday, and uh, it will be on investing in financial security. So this is uh, a continuation of what Dr. Magara has shared. Please make sure you're in. We shall return on the 9th uh, of January, 2023. And Friday, the same day, we shall also be having our usual prayer, uh, prayer time for the sharings that we've had this week. God bless you and have a blessed week. Wow, thank you Isaac. so much. God bless you to Isaac. God bless you, Dr. Madara. Thank you. Yes.